Praise God. We're recording, and we welcome everybody to the online church. <clears throat> this is a worldwide ministry that reaches out to people in many nations in the world. Um, we do the live service Sunday mornings at 11 o'clock Eastern Time. And then our recordings go on YouTube and on our website, www.backtobasicsministriesinc.com. And then we email them out to people, and, and uh, we make them available in many nations. And people all over the world are hearing these messages and are being blessed. So we want to make sure that people are hearing what thus saith the Lord, not what Leroy Carter thinks, but what the Lord thinks. And so it's so important, ladies and gentlemen, to say what thus saith the Lord. And for the, those of you who are preachers out there, you pastors and teachers, evangelists, missionaries, preach the word of God. And I really uh, want to encourage you, encourage you with my whole heart, don't get caught up in all this rhetoric. Uh, so many Christians have made choices, make, they've made decisions, and, they, uh, uh, have, and they're caught up in this political mess. And many are guided by uh, what the politicians think or what the political leaders think. Ladies and gentlemen, when the deal goes down, it is not going to be what your favorite politician thinks, but what does God have to say about it. And so at the online church, we bring you the word of God, and uh, we stick with the Bible. We preach what the Bible says. And we, I want to encourage every one of you to study your word for yourself. I want to encourage you to study the Bible for yourself. Know what God's word says. Jesus said, man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds out of the mouth of God. Now, I know and you know that this is not the most popular ministry in town because I stand on the word of God. I refuse to give in. I refuse to give in uh, to those who uh, are preaching politics. I refuse to give in uh, to those who, pre who preach Republican Party politics. I refuse to give in to those who preach Democratic Party politics. Ladies and gentlemen, at the Back to Basics, online church, I refuse to give in to what is called American Christianity. Well, what's American Christianity, Pastor Carter? <clears throat> American Christianity is you wave the flag, you wave the flag, and that gets people's attention, and then uh, uh, you, you, you have to be politically correct, you know. Uh, um, if, if, you, if you're not, following a certain political leader, then uh, people will denounce you and they will uh, uh, talk about you and, and beat you down. And then the church, ladies and gentlemen, the church in America is waving the flag, but much of the church is being led and dominated by a political party. Ladies and gentlemen, God is not a Republican. God is not a, a Democrat. God loves you. But God is not God is not in favor of a lot of this mess that is coming out of people's mouths and a lot of this rhetoric that people are saying and stuff they're writing. And so back to basics online church, we take a stand. We take a stand upon the word of God. I preach what the Lord God says in his word, and uh, I'm not worried about being liked by the politicians, and I'm not uh, uh, concerned about whether you're Republican and you, you don't like me or you're a Democrat and you don't like me, but it's the Word of God. Hear this Word of God. Love the Word of God. Be guided by the Word of God. You see, because after the dust settles and after the turmoil is over, the only ones who are going to stand in this nation are those who really stand on the word of God. Not what, not what their political party is, is, is preaching. Not what their politicians are preaching. And, and the sad thing about the church in America, I call it American Christianity, the sad thing is pastors are in the pockets, in the pockets of politicians. The politicians are telling them what to do and how to do it, and uh, people are taking a stand, and, 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 uh, and um, 
many, many, many pastors are telling people how to vote. And, and this, ladies and gentlemen, they, they messed up in the last election. They called a certain man the, uh, the Antichrist, and, and, and many of those pastors have been silenced because of, of that. They called a certain man the Antichrist. I mean, they blaspheme God, call a certain man the Antichrist, and now they have to eat their words because now they got somebody in office who's worse than what they had before. And so my, my thing is I'm going to preach the word of God. I'm going to be bold in the Holy Ghost and say what thus saith the Lord and hope that people's eyes will be open. The Holy Spirit said, you preach the word, I'll do the work. So that's where that's the, that's the way we're going to roll. I'm going to preach the word. The Lord is going to do the work. Okay, hey, I see my son Wes Carter is on. Uh, Wes, do you have any, any, can you hear me? Can you hear me out there? Yes. <coughs> okay, is that Wes? Okay. I see a six. Someone, is, someone just said yes. Okay, we're going to move on. Oh, we're going to move on. LaFrance Johnson. LaFrance, Pastor LaFrance Johnson. God bless you. Okay. Yes. And Walter Johnson, greetings to you. A shout out to you. Praise God. Praise God. Am I, am I preaching the truth, LaFrance, about this political thing? Yes, you are, Pastor. It is on the big. It's, it's not popular, is it, LaFrance? No, it's not. People will hate on you. you it's never popular. <laughs> no, no. They will hate on you if you if you don't agree with them politically. And But, you know, God's going to pull the blankets off a whole lot of folks in this nation. Yes. And the exposure is coming soon. Hey, ladies and gentlemen, before we get into a word, and um, uh, we're going to ask uh, Ryan, Ryan Trogler to come and, and lead us in prayer. But before Ryan comes, just uh, several months ago, I visited the church, and I attended their Sunday school. And they had one of their pastors teaching Sunday school. Now, ladies and gentlemen, this is what's shaming many churches in America. People are not teaching the Word of God. They're teaching what they think. Here's a man. He stands up. First of all, he could not read too well himself, so he had someone in the congregation read the scripture. That's all right. Hey, that's all right. That's the way the old timers used to do. Some of them couldn't read, but they had someone read for them, and they expounded on the scripture that people heard. Well, anyway, this man had someone read the scripture, and then he began teaching the Sunday school. He spent 45 minutes, ladies and gentlemen, 45 minutes talking a bunch of nonsense 99% of it had nothing to do with the scriptures, nothing whatsoever. He was off base, and the people sat up there, the members of that church, they sat up there and listened to him, and I said to myself, if that is what is going on every Sunday in this church, this is a pitiful ministry. And so uh, with about maybe five or ten minutes left in the, in the service, I wanted to be, to be quiet. LaFrance Johnson, I wanted to be quiet. But the Holy Spirit was in me like Jeremiah, like fire shut up in my bones. And I stood up and I said, excuse me, before you close out, I said, let's take a look at the scripture. So I reviewed the scripture that they had read, and then I expounded for five minutes on the scripture. And the people, their eyes got big and their hearts leaped out because they heard uh, an explanation of the word of God, and it was edifying to them. But my heart was so heavy and so grieved because every Sunday, I think, they're going back into that same old, same old. Can you imagine what's happening all over this nation? Yes, I, I call it sir. American Christianity, where people, many people don't even study the Word. Many pastors don't study the Word. <laughs> they don't know the Word. Uh, many can't even read the Word. They don't take time to uh, study those words. They don't have to use a dictionary. No, yeah. Understand that word? Uh, Okay, I got you, Wes. We hear you. Um, I need to mute you. Sorry. Oh, that's all right. That's all right. I'm glad you're on. God bless you, son. Love you. And sure. okay, and, and 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 so all of all of America, this thing is happening where uh, people are hearing stuff, and it's not the word of God. And I believe the spirit of God is grieved, but the the thing 
Ryan, that troubles me most of all is the fact that people are stubborn, and they don't want you messing with what they're getting now. Don't make any, don't make any inroads. Don't challenge them. And I know at that particular church, they ro uh, some of the leaders rolled their eyes at me after that service was over. They rolled my eye, their eyes at me like, you got the nerve to come here and talk about uh, and, and, and try to show, show us up. I didn't try to show them up. I tried to give the congregation a little bit of what that word was saying because the teacher didn't teach what the word was saying. And so right. there's, a lot, there's a lot of hatred, uh, LaFrance, in the body of Christ. There's a lot of, uh, uh, a lot of bitterness. And, and God wants his people to know the difference. God wants people to discern. He wants you to be, be careful where you, even where you fellowship. Be careful what church you go to. Be careful who you sit under. Uh, Pastor LaFrance Johnson from Norristown, Pennsylvania, can you comment on that, what I just said? Yes, I can, Pastor. Many people are hungry for the truth, and they have been deceived for so long that most of them aren't instructed correctly in the Word. They um. They'll take whatever is given because they like where they're at. They don't want to be challenged. And until you get to the place where you realize there got to be something better than this, yes. they're, they're just going to continue in that slump. And you really got to get a, a true hunger for God. You got to get a, a hunger for change. And I found out change is not change until you change it with the Word of God. Now, you know where I came from, Pastor. You know Praise where God. I was delivered from. And if it had not been for the hearing and doing of the Word of God, I would still be lost, still be probably dead because my husband had a spirit of suicide. But because I heard the word and I began to do the word and pray the word, my husband got jealous and wanted to find out why I was so interested in the word. He got into the word. He changed, and, and God just delivered both of us. We didn't get into the word. We didn't get into the word to become ministers. We got into the word because we knew we needed God. Above everything else, we needed God, and we needed truth. Because without him, we were dying. Praise God. Praise we God. Were, we, were, we were with Bible called living dead. Praise God. Praise so God. I just thank God for you, Pastor, Pastor George, Dr. Waters, Dr. Woods, all those who have and put it into my life. I don't take it for granted. Sometimes I miss it, but I praise God. He brings me back with his bands of kindness, loving kindness. And I just thank God for you having entered into our lives. <clears throat> and you ministered to my husband and delivered him from his addiction of drugs and alcohol. And the way that God did it is just miraculous. You know, I didn't beat him up. I didn't allow my kids to beat him up. He just heard the word. And he did what he had to do to avoid the, the crowd that he was hanging with. He had a good friend, Paul Noble, that said, Brother, if you don't, if you don't get saved, I can't hang with you. Yes. And, you know, so I, I just thank God for the people that he put in my life at that time. Um, there's a lot of things that have changed, but some people are only in your life for a season. But for thanking God for the word of God, that's able to change your life and your mind, because that's where, where I was stuck at in my mind. My mind was dictating my life, but it was dictating it according to the ways of the world. But when I got the Word of God and implanted it in my heart, I internalized it. That's all I wanted. Eat in the morning, in the night. I would cut off my phone at 12 o'clock to 3 o'clock, get in the Word and prayer. And God changed my life. And I thank God. This year we were married 46 years. Praise God. Praise God. So I Wonderful. give God all the glory. I give Hallelujah. God all the glory. Hallelujah. But it's important. That's what you said about um, 
ministers teach in Sunday school. Our youth are so vulnerable. They need the truth. They need their eyes open to the word of God in a way that they're able to digest it. And um, Sunday school is so important for our youth. And a lot of clear, a lot of churches now don't have Sunday school. They don't have church school. The Bible says, "My people and, are destroyed for lack of knowledge." And because they reject it. Yes, yes. Praise God, brothers and sisters. You've heard a wonderful, powerful testimony from Pastor LaFrance Johnson in Norristown, Pennsylvania. God changed her life along with her husband, Pastor Walter Johnson, and now they're in the process of, uh, they've been for years preaching the Word of God, and they've seen many lives changed by the Word of God, and we thank God. Uh, and she mentioned uh, her husband's friend, Paul Noble, who said, hey, brother, if you don't change, I can't hang out with you anymore. That's the kind of, that's the kind of commitment we need in this world. Hey, if you're not willing to change, I can't hang out with you anymore. I got to shake the dust off my feet. By the way, Paul Noble is celebrating his 70th birthday today. Yes. And his yes. boldness paid off. His boldness paid yes. off. I saw Paul Noble one day when I was visiting him at his house. He was talking uh, to a brother and he's trying to witness to the brother and the brother rejected Jesus and Paul cried. I mean, he just got on his knees in at, in front of his sofa in his living room and just wailed and cried like a baby because his mm -hmm. friend did not receive Jesus Christ. But praise God, later on, his friend did receive Jesus Christ as Lord. This praise is the God. kind of commitment, ladies and gentlemen, we're talking about in this dying world we're living in where people need to stop believing all this rhetoric from these lying politicians and, and get into the word of God. And, the, and pastors are going to have to give an account. Believers are going to have to give an account. Ryan Trugler, uh, 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 come on and lead us in prayer. This is Brother Ryan up in Marysville, Pennsylvania. He's going to lead us in prayer. Uh, good morning again, Pastor. Good morning, Church. <clears throat> um, Heavenly Father, we want to thank you for making a beautiful day today and letting us rejoice in it. Because you are with us all the time, Lord. Thank you for that. And Lord, we just want to thank you for uh, dying on the cross and shedding your blood for all of our sins and ascending into heaven to be at the right hand of the Father. And Lord, we want to ask you to come down and give Pastor Carter the truth, the knowledge, and the wisdom to teach us your word again today. Because a lot of people need to hear the word and they need to hear the truth. And we have a great pastor that's going to teach us the truth and tell us your word, Lord. So we want to thank you for that as well. And Lord, we just want, to, want you to bless, protect this great nation and their government and our military and this online ministry and everybody that's joining us today. So Lord, we just want to say we love you, we praise you, we honor you, and glorify you, and worship you. In Jesus Christ, precious name. Amen. 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 Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. We thank you, Ryan. You're so faithful, and we, we give God the glory and the honor. And so happy to have, have my son on with us today and his family. And uh, we're going to take a look at some words um, of the, the, the Scripture. Uh, I'd like to share a portion of the Scripture, Isaiah 53. So if you have your Bible, please open your Bible to Isaiah 53 and um, download or download Isaiah 53. And my subject today is going to be, whose report? Will you believe? Whose report will you believe? I think be, this will be a very challenging message for a lot of people and just a confirmation for others. But whose report will you believe? <laughs> Isaiah, Isaiah wrote, um, listen to the 800 years before Jesus Christ appeared on earth, Isaiah wrote this word. He prophesied. Now, this is Bible prophecy, ladies and gentlemen. Isaiah is not on. Uh, I do, Isaiah does not have an online ministry where he talks about earthquakes and how large an earthquake was, was whether it was a 5.3 or 6.1. And he doesn't build a whole ministry on talking about earthquakes and tsunamis. 
Isaiah prophesied. He preached what, what the heart of the Lord God was. Ladies and gentlemen, when we get into this attitude that we want to hear from heaven, not hear what uh, pastor so-and-so is saying or prophet so-and-so is saying or, or senator so-and-so is saying or representative so-and-so is saying or president so-and-so is saying, when we make up our minds, we want the truth. When we make up our minds that we're not going to listen to what TBN says or CNN or ABC or CBS, but we want to hear what God says, that's going to make a difference in a whole lot of lives. And the one reason why many people are not going to church today is because there's so much confusion and so much, I mean, so much mess. We call it mess, M-E-S-S. -S. They're going, they're not getting the word of God. They're getting stuff that makes their ears tickle. Oh, they have nice fellowship dinners and luncheons after church. And, and some of them give away clothing. Some give away food and that sort of thing. But people are going to church. They're messed up going there. And they're messed up when they leave. And there's been a falling away from the church because of the compromise of the leaders and the fact that, that people have taken their eyes off Jesus. In fact, they have renounced Jesus. They have rejected Jesus Christ. And the Lord is still knocking on our doors. He said, Behold, I stand at the door and knock. If any man hear my voice and open the door, I will come in and sup with him and he with me. What a promise. The Lord says, If any person will hear my voice and open the door of their heart. In other words, you can be sitting up in church right now and if you hear Jesus say, let me come in, let me come in, you can be a member of a church for 30 years. You can, be, you can be teaching Sunday school for 25 years and still not know Jesus. And I've seen many who were like that. But when the moment you say, I'm going to open my heart to Jesus, yes, I want to change in my life. Uh, I'm, I'm going to let Jesus come in, Lord, come in and make the difference. That is what makes that's the game changer, ladies and gentlemen. And Isaiah preached. He prophesied. He spoke from God's heart. 800 years before Jesus was born, this is what Isaiah said. Listen to this word. Who hath believed our report? And to whom is the arm of the Lord revealed? For he shall grow up before him as a tender plant and as a root out of a dry ground, he hath no form nor comeliness. And when we shall see him, there is no beauty that we should desire him. He is despised and rejected of men, a man of sorrows and acquainted with grief. And we hid, as it were, our faces from him. He was despised and we esteemed him not. Surely he hath borne our griefs and carried our sorrows. Yet we did esteem him stricken, smitten of God, and afflicted. But he was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement of our peace was upon him, and with his stripes we are healed. All we like sheep have gone astray. We have turned every one to his own way, and the Lord that laid on him the iniquity of us all. Verse 7 of Isaiah 53, he was oppressed and he was afflicted, yet he opened not his mouth. He is brought as a lamb to the slaughter, and as a sheep before her shearers is dumb, so he opened not his mouth. He was taken from prison and from judgment, and who shall declare his generation? For he was cut off out of the land of the living, for the transgression of my people was he stricken. And he made his grave with the wicked and with the rich in his death, because he had done no violence, neither was any deceit in his mouth. Yet it pleased the Lord to bruise him. He hath put him to grief. When thou shalt make his soul an offering for sin, he shall, seed his, he shall see his seed, he shall prolong his days, and the pleasure of the Lord shall prosper in his hand. He shall see of the travail of his soul and shall be satisfied. By his knowledge shall my righteous servant justify many, 
for he shall bear their iniquities. Therefore will I divide him a portion with the great, and shall divide the spoil with the strong, because he hath poured out his soul unto death, and he was numbered with the transgressors, and he bare the sin of many, and made intercession for the transgressors. Isaiah, ladies and gentlemen, wrote this 800 years before Jesus Christ walked on the earth. And when you read this, this chapter, you'll say, who is this man writing about? And we also we find in Acts chapter 9, the Ethiopian eunuch, the treasurer of the country of Ethiopia, was on his way, leaving from Jerusalem, going back to Ethiopia, and he was sitting in his chariot, reading the same scripture I just read, he was reading it from a scroll in his chariot, and he didn't understand what he was reading about, even though, listen to this, even though he had just come from Jerusalem worshiping at the time of the Passover, he was worshiping God, but he did not know Jesus Christ. And it just so happened that Jesus had been crucified at the time that this Ethiopian was in Jerusalem. And so here he is. He, he, he knows of God, like many people going to church today, they know of God, but he did not have a personal relationship with God. Now, this is a leader. He was the treasurer of the nation of Ethiopia. And um, I wrote about him in my book, Black Heroes of the Bible. And um, he's sitting in his chariot reading this very same 53rd chapter of Isaiah, and and the Holy Spirit sent Philip to this Ethiopian. And Philip approached the man's chariot and heard the man reading out loud, because in those days they read out loud. And Philip said to the Ethiopian, do you understand what you are reading? And the Ethiopian said, no, unless I have someone to teach me. Ladies and gentlemen, in many of our churches today, we need someone to teach us the word of God. I know I can get an amen out there from somebody. In our churches today, we need men and women who will seek the Lord for the word of God, who will study the word of God, who will show themselves approved unto God, and will trust the Holy Spirit to rightly divide the word of truth. But here's what the problem is in, in the church today, and especially in the church in America. The church has become so politically aligned. Half of the church is Republican. Half of the church is Democrat. And so the Republicans don't want to hear anything the Democrats want to say. Not only do you see this in church, but you see it in life itself. Uh, I don't want to talk to you because you're a Republican. I don't want to talk to you because you're a Democrat. But we both wave the flag and we say, God bless America and make America great again. And so you have two groups hating one another, and yet they call themselves Christians. My question is this. How can you call yourself a Christian if you're hating on someone else because they do not agree with you politically? Come on, somebody. How can you call yourself a Christian? And I challenge every pastor out there and everyone who will listen to my voice. I know a lot of you don't want to hear me, but God's going to challenge you anyhow. He'll raise up somebody to pull the sheet off of you, pull the covers off you. How can you call yourself a Christian and you've got hatred in your heart because someone has a different political orientation or because someone's skin is a different color or because someone comes from a, 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 the other side of the tracks or because someone lives south of the border. How can you say you love Jesus Christ? How can you say you're a child of God? How can you say you're born again and you got this hatred? And, and this is one of my challenges. Because Isaiah asked this very same question, who hath believed our report? And to whom is the arm of the Lord revealed? Who has re believed our report? My question is, whose report are you believing? Ladies and gentlemen, there's so much mess in the church, so many opinions, and God's word is not getting through into the hearts of the people because you've got Republican preachers preaching this, Democrat preachers 
preaching this, they're all in the pocket of some politician, and some of them are scared to preach the word of God. Some of them are scared to preach on certain subjects, and they ignore the word of God. They carefully select what words they're going to use because they don't want to offend anybody. So let's get back to this Ethiopian in this chariot. No, I haven't forgotten him. He's saying, I don't understand what this word means because I need someone to teach me. He had the humility and the honesty to say, even though I'm a great leader in my nation and I got people under me, yet I'm, I'm confounded by this word. I don't understand what I'm reading. Someone, please, come and teach me. And he said to Philip, can you teach me? Ladies and gentlemen, when we develop a teachable spirit, when we open up our heart, as Pastor LaFrance said earlier, and when we open up our heart and say, yes, I want to change, I want to be taught, and ladies and gentlemen, uh, contrary to that situation I was in when I visited that church uh, a short while ago, and they, they, the, the pastors rolled their eyes at me. They got angry at me because I, I, uh, I, uh, I uh, uh, spoke the word of God and laid it out there and people understood it. They could have done that if they had opened their hearts to the Lord Jesus. But yet there's so much hatred, so much bitterness, so much jealousy, so much envy. And people have turned their hearts. They have hardened their hearts toward God. Not only have they hardened their hearts toward you because you're politically different or your beliefs are different or you wear a different, uh, you, you wear jeans to church and they say you, you ought to be wearing a dress or, or, or you drive a Volkswagen and they think you ought to be driving a BMW. Ladies and gentlemen, people need to open their hearts to God and to the people God sent. And so this Ethiopian got saved in the desert. It's in Acts chapter 9. Read it. And he asked Philip, come and sit with me and, and teach me what this word says. And Philip climbed up in the man's chariot. And the Bible says he was reading from Acts, um, from Isaiah 53. He was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement of our peace was upon him. And with his stripes, we're healed. And the Ethiopian said, who is this talking about? And Philip, Philip proclaim Jesus Christ, who was, who, whom Isaiah wrote about 800 years before, Philip introduced this man to Jesus Christ, and this Ethiopian had just left Jerusalem, where Jesus had been crucified, and the Ethiopian's heart was open, and he received Jesus Christ in the desert, in Gaza, it's in the Bible, and Philip led him to the Lord, and then the Ethiopian said, well, what prevents me from being baptized? See, there's some water. There's an oasis. What prevents me from being baptized? And Philip baptized the Ethiopian in the desert. Then the Bible says the Holy Spirit caught Philip up and took him to a place called Azotus. And the Ethiopian never saw him anymore. The Holy Spirit lifted Philip up out of that chariot, caught him up, and transfer I mean he flew him the Holy Spirit flew Philip to a place called Azotus and the Ethiopian the rest of the story uh, it's in my book Black Heroes of the Bible if you want a copy send me an email I'll send you a free copy okay send me an email it's a great book it's a great book it's one of uh, one of the many of the 21 stories of, 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 of blacks in the Bible and this man happened to be an African and uh, He's the first one to take the gospel into Africa. He got saved because he, he, even though he was a leader, he was not too proud to say, I need someone to teach me. Ladies and gentlemen, what if our senators, what if our representatives, what if our president would say, I need someone to teach me the ways of God? Now, now see, that, that, that's, that, question I just asked gonna, is going to rub a lot of Americans wrong because they think their president is above the law. He's above the Bible. He doesn't need God. He can do anything he wants. He, he, he's a president, and, uh, and, and, and people worship him. There are pastors who worship the president. 
pastors, you better wake up and smell the coffee. You better wake up. And if what if the president said, I need somebody to teach me the ways of God? And now he's surrounded by people. He's surrounded by people like Ken Copeland and uh, Kenneth Hagan and Bob, uh, 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 what's his name, um, Jeffress and, so, and, and, and Paula White. I mean, he's a, surrounded by a lot of big-name preachers, but somebody needs to teach him the Word of God. And if the Word of God would, if he would let the Word of God come in, you would see a change in this nation. The same with the senators. The same with a lot of our pastors. Some of them are so puffed up, they've forgotten about the Bible. And they're walking in their own understanding and walking in the ways of the people whom they hire. Listen to this. They hire certain people to serve them. And if the people don't serve them, they fire them and pretend they never knew them. That's one of the techniques of our current president. He'll fire you in a moment if you don't do what he, he says. But we need someone. We need leaders in this nation. We need leaders in, in our churches. We need leaders in our households who are going to say, who has believed our reports? We need leaders who will say, I will believe the report of the Lord. We need leaders who will read Isaiah, read the Bible, and will see that, that, that there's someone greater than we are. He was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquities. And, and the chastisement for our peace was upon him. And with his stripes, we are healed. We need leaders. We need people all over this nation. We need pastors who will say, all we like sheep have gone astray. Everyone has turned to his own way. And the Lord has laid upon him the iniquity of us all. But yet, people are so proud, they will not humble themselves and they're so hardened in their positions they have taken in this nation. Even churches, ladies and gentlemen, have stopped preaching the gospel and are now preaching politics. Even churches, Sunday schools, no longer teach the word of God. They're teaching political rhetoric. And, and people are dying in this nation, ladies and gentlemen. Um, and, and, and it's not only in this nation but it's affecting nations all around us that people have turned their hearts against God and have made themselves into gods and have made their own gods. They have created their own gods. And we've got a president who, who will say he, he's the best thing ever happened to this nation. He, he, he thinks he's the best thing ever happened to this nation. And then we've got a, a whole lot of flunkies around him who are worshiping him and saying, yeah, yeah, you are, you are, because they're getting paychecks. But ladies and gentlemen, the day is coming. And it's coming soon, Melanie, where only the righteous shall see God. Only those who are humble will see God and go with him. The day is coming. Ladies and gentlemen, the day is coming. Dark clouds are coming against this nation. The day is coming where only those who truly love the Lord Jesus Christ are going to survive. Ladies and gentlemen, the day is coming where great ministries are going to fall. Where great, now I don't claim to be a prophet, but God put this in my spirit. Great ministries are going to fall. And a lot of people who have been deceived by these politically correct preachers, by these politically correct prophets, by these politically correct teachers, a lot of people are going are gonna to be deceived and will be destroyed unless we repent. Unless we repent from my house to the White House and from the White House to your house, unless we repent, ladies and gentlemen, and humble ourselves, and cast out that spirit of pride and call upon the name of the Lord. Isaiah says, who hath, repeat, who hath believed our report? And my question is, whose report will you believe? Will you believe the report of the Lord? Will you believe the Bible? Will you get back into the word of God and humble yourself? God said, if my people 
which are called by my name will humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways. Then will I hear from heaven. I will forgive their sin. I will heal their land. That's what God says in his word, and he means this. He truly, truly means this. And so uh, read your word, study your word, and be teachable. Be teachable. Don't be so puffed up, so proud that nobody can teach you anything. Create in us, O oh God, a clean heart. Renew a right spirit within us. Help us to humble ourselves before you. Help us to honor those who have uh, authority over us, those whom you have put in our lives to teach us your word. And help us, Lord. But most of all, most of all help us to seek you for ourselves. And let us not take anybody else's word for it unless it's written in Scripture, but help us to seek you with all our heart. And, Lord, you said, See, when you seek me with your whole heart, you shall find me. Ask, and it shall be given. Seek, and ye shall find. Knock, and the door shall be opened. I pray this in Jesus' name. And, Father, I pray that if there's anyone listening, uh, whether they're live with us today or listening to the recording, if they're not saved, that they will ask Jesus Christ to come into their life and save them right now. And if there's any who have been saved and have backslidden, I ask that you help them to repent, to confess that backslidden condition and renew their trust in you and save them, Lord God, I pray. We thank you for this ministry. We thank you for your word. Let your word not return until you void. Lord, move throughout this nation and the nations. Pour out your spirit upon us. Humble us all. Humble us all beneath your mighty hand, Lord God. Humble every one of us. For all of us have sinned and come short of your glory. We're trusting in your word, Lord God. We're trusting in your word that you will turn the heart of this nation to you and return backsliders to you and that you get the glory and honor not only out of this nation but every nation. And Lord God, wake the church up out of the church's slumber. Wake the church up. Wake the teachers up. Wake the pastors up. Wake the apostles up. Wake the evangelists up. Wake all the people up that they will worship you and call upon your name. And then help us, Lord God, to walk together in love. Help us to love one another. Stop hating on one another. Help us to love one another. These things we ask in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Well, praise God. Praise God. Praise God. Hallelujah. <clears throat> Hallelujah. We're going to stop the recording, but I want you all to stay on. Let's chat and chew a little bit. And um, you can find this recording on my YouTube channel, YouTube slash Leroy Carter. You can also find it on our website. Um, these services go up every Sunday fresh on the website, uh, www.backtobasicsministriesinc.com on the front page of the website and on the online church page. And um, we make these available. We also ask you to join us on Wednesday nights at the same station uh, for Through the Bible. We're going through the Bible. We're looking at uh, the book of Judges and um, looking at the Old Testament books of history. The, these uh, teachings are very powerful, very exciting. And we want to be a blessing to you. So give us a call. Uh, if you will, please. <laughs>